Hi, it's Mama Rose, and I'm gonna do a little grounding right now. And I like to come out in the yard and water the spot water. Uh, the sprinkler system isn't working, and so I like to come out and I get my look at I get my feet all wet. And I'm not sure if that got that. I'm making everybody dizzy. So. And I wanted to talk a little bit about grounding. I wanted to show you the tower though. Things, uh, if you've watched the video one and two, you've seen the tower. And I got the second garden tower. And it, um, I've transplanted some little seedlings that were in the dirt in some planters and put them in the garden tower. And they kind of all frumped over, most of them did. And so I wanted to show you how they kind of came back to life. Plus some of my beans sprouted, so I went ahead and put those inside of the little pods there. But grounding is good because, you know, you hear a lot about the electromagnetic fields, you know, from the cell phones, of which I do have. Let me show you the, ah, I can't turn the hose off on this without messing something up. But see, I have this little thing on my the back of my phone. I have it on the front top and the bottom of the TV. I have another one that is on the modem um, of my uh, thing. I got something that's on my keychain. I have a little headset that I have that I'll use once in a while. And I've got one of these gizmos on there. And it's supposed to help when the electro uh, frequencies come through from the cell phone and all the computer and all that stuff. It's supposed to kind of break it up and help um, kind of break it up so it doesn't get into the body and cause a build up so anyway that's grounding if you stand on sand or dirt or grass or anything that's natural not the cement then you're gonna you're it's gonna kind of release you know look it up on the internet you know it kind of releases the um, the buildup of you know the radiation or the electro electricity kind of that builds up in the body that we don't need there like I'm sitting in a little, uh, kind of a little area that's my office, and there's my freeze dryer back there, and uh, it's, I'll do the bird bath, that's a better background. Anyway, I'm sitting in an office with lights, just fluorescent lights over my head, or light bulbs, and there's no windows or anything, and so after, you know, three or four hours in there, um, Usually I try to get up every couple of hours, but sometimes I get really busy and I look in there and I'm going, wow, I've been sitting in here all this time. And it can affect your sleep, um, even whatever you've been, if you're in an office situation without any windows. So, you know, just try to get out. And uh, if you got a place at work that you can get barefoot, you know, go ahead and do that. Or a nearby park. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm doing back here. So, you know, 20 minutes. 20 minutes is really good. One time I was at my cousin's and we went walking the dog down the park and I was feeling really tired and lethargic and I took off my shoes as we were all standing there with all the doggy people um, and just stood there and talked to them and before, it wasn't even 20 minutes, uh, all of a sudden I realized, you know, I feel pretty good. And so, you know, it's kind of just like, you know, something happens with the ground and um, it releases all that, um, I forgot what you'd call it, but you know, I'll remember what the word is. But you know, you get kind of get the idea. So try to do that once in a while. So what I'm gonna do is shut the, I'm gonna leave the water over here going. <clears throat> and I wanna take you over to the tower. So this is the first tower that I had shown everybody before, which is, you know, doing really, really good. I found some worms on it. Look, I've got a cucumber down here um, that's ready to pick. And there it is right there. And I'm getting lots of tomatoes. My, uh, the lettuce that she, I'm going to go ahead and switch over away from me so I can, if I can figure out how to do that. I don't think I can. Oh, well. Um, no, I guess I'm stuck in this mode. But there you go. If you can see that right there, right there, and then down there, I've got lettuce down there. Oh boy, let me drag so that I've got the cucumber down here. But I wanted to show you this. It's wilting a little now because it's the middle of the day. It's going to make a liar out of me. 
But see, these all pretty much perked up. I mean, they were all drop, dropping over. I went ahead and cut off all the dead leaves because some of them didn't make it. And here's the tomato plant from the other, from yesterday you saw. And then here's the beans. I went ahead and put the green beans. Hope I can see this. The green beans in there. There we go. And I've got some up on top a little bit. So we're going to have a lot of green beans on this. Now, today is the third day of our carnivore experiment. So here I am, a big foodie. I love to cook. Um, when I, we got on the ketogenic thing, which I will go and do a testimony, a health testimony, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through the house really quick and show you. Oh, I'll show you like this first, what I had to do. So this is the freeze dryer. I just emptied it. It's defrosting right now. You can see all the ice in there, but it's defrosting. So I'm going to go ahead and just close that and let it keep defrosting. So what I did is, again, we're doing ketogenic. I'm, I'm putting videos on the internet for, you know, how to cook cheesecake, Italian cheesecake, keto style, and flaxseed crackers, and fruit leathers with strawberries with lots of good electrolytes and everything in it. I'm doing all this stuff. And now we're going ketogenic. I mean, now we're going... Now we're going carnivore. So here I am with all this food. I've got a clean refrigerator out today. We went for a walk this morning and um, we, we had, went to have a really nice walk. But what I ended up doing is is I, I have all these wonderful uh, sprouts. They're uh, buckwheat, which was really good. I mean, I was really surprised because I don't like buckwheat, like buckwheat pancakes or buckwheat. It I don't think it tastes good. but in the sprouts it was wonderful also the um, sunflower sprouts were delicious and so you make a salad put a bunch of parsley in there cilantro basil whatever you want and then some nice romaine or some dark green lettuce and oh you got a wonderful salad and you put some nice you know good oil on there and some anyway i can make a salad just be a wonderful experience so but here I am, I'm not gonna eat this anymore. So I freeze dried it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run another batch. I'm gonna freeze dry this. I'm gonna go ahead and put this inside of a mason jar and then I'll go ahead and, and uh, vacuum seal the lid. So I'm gonna set that aside. And then I had these wonderful string beans we didn't even get a chance to make. And I put these in the Instant Pot. They're organic uh, string beans that I got from Costco. And I just put them in there for, I think I decided a minute was going to be enough. And then I had this wonderful ham that I bought from a place that sources everything really, really strictly. And it was just two pieces of this wonderful ham that was smoked, really a, a deep smoke flavor. I even forgot I bought it. And I cut that up and I, I cooked it. I with this and it had that wonderful flavor. If you've ever had the, the green beans at... Um, Oh, well, what's the name? The Cracker Barrel or the Texas Roadhouse. My husband loves those. So I wanted to try to make something, you know, that I could control the ingredients that tasted like it. And I got it on spot. However, he only got to eat like one helping. And then we went out and didn't eat it the next day. And then we ended up going carnivore. So this is definitely out. But this is wonderful because I can go ahead and freeze dry it, which I did. And we can even eat it. Um, raw like this with a big glass of water. It's kind of nice to snack on that stuff. And another thing that I did was my Brussels sprout. So if you're watching this and you're watching this because freeze dryer came up, um, if you ever do go keto or keto, keto or carnivore and you need to, don't want to get rid of your food, but you want to go ahead and do something with it uh, so it's not wasted. This is kind of good. And you can eat these. These Brussels sprouts turned out really good. It just, I did them in the Instant Pot and they got a little overdone. So I have to get that down when I start using it again for vegetables. But I did that. And then I also made this wonderful taco mixture and we were doing tacos and lettuce leaves, which is great. If you're watching this and you're ketogenic, 
um, or low carb, this is a great thing to do. This is grass-fed meat. Um, it's 85% meat, 15% fat, and then I just added seasonings to it like cumin and a bunch of that stuff. However, on carnivore, they want you to kind of lay low on the spices. So I am sneaking in some granulated garlic, and I am, of course, using salt and pepper, and that's what everybody says to do. And so this is going to be an adventure. Again, this is more or less a, a, a little talk on us going carnivore and how it's affecting everything. And I just showed you the garden. And so here I am. I've got all, you should see all the recipe books that I have. I'm just going to take you over here. I'm going to make you dizzy over here. And they're all over the house, really, my cookbooks and my keto books. Look, I've got a whole bunch of them here, even extra copies for people. And then I have a bunch over here on this bookshelf. And I have cultured stuff. Look, at I have keto, every keto book you can imagine. Look, I'm not, I'm all, everything's kind of upside down here today. I've been busy. So, I have all of these keto books. Um, I've got, I just see right now over on the couch, there's like three of them, uh, three big keto recipe books. And they all have great information in them about the ketogenic diet or way of eating. And it's a really good way to get into um, e eating maybe carnivore, if that's what works for you. We can, and I am going to do a testimony. I have to find a quiet place and do a little health testimony. But we've traveled the whole, just really quickly, the whole gamut of, you know, diet and nutrition. You know, when the kids were young, I uh, taught classes at a local health food store on how to make tofu, uh, everything. Uh, tofu pudding, tofu lasagna, I made whole wheat bread, we ground the wheat, we sold the wheat grinders and all that, did all that, I sold Vitamixes, really into um, making, um, you know, really good wholesome stuff, I thought. So as I got, as I got going on it, I was even known as the bread lady. So we did a lot of healthful things. I mean, I stopped making jam because of all the sugar in it when the kids were little, but I did make fruit leathers and I used honey for them. And as a treat, we'd go to the health food store and we'd get ice cream that was, that was uh, sweetened with honey. And boy, did they go crazy when they went to my parents' house because then my parents had ice cream and pies and cakes and cookies. My dad loved to feed everybody. And uh, so then they, they ate it. So it wasn't like they weren't allowed to eat it, but you know, I sent them to school with whole wheat bread that I had made with uh, peanut butter and honey and avocado and sprouts and you know, stuff like that. I never really got into the processed things from like, because we lived in near Loma Linda, uh, like the soy stuff, although I did make veggie burgers for a while, but you know, basically, you know, we just ate healthy and uh, we still drink diet soda. I was using sweet and low. I mean, all this. So then, you know, I don't mean for this to be uh, my testimony, but we came from a lot of places. We came from Atkins to eating whole grains to eating, um, uh, you know, low carb, low fat, uh, just on the vegetarian side. I went through, we went through a period, I my husband follows me where we did meat on the side so really a lot of vegetables but we were still having some breads and some uh, we were still having carbohydrates in our diets uh, so we weren't in ketosis but we were eating healthy then I took everything all the processed foods that went thought that was going to be the magic bullet and it wasn't and then uh, what did I do so you know we've gone you know different different ways and gained weight and not lost it tried exercising so we've been doing ketogenic for the last two years since July uh, two years ago so now it's July it's the end of July we really pretty much went strictly on my birthday July 1st 2017 we went we went out to dinner with another couple whose birthday is the same day as mine and we did not have those wonderful biscuits that 
or the Red Lobster gives you. In fact, I tasted one the other day and it was so salty, I didn't like it at all. But you know, then I was really embracing the ketogenic. Once we got, I, I stumbled onto that and then we just started losing weight and I, it just started melting off. My husband and I both lost a bunch of weight, 35, 40 pounds by now. Uh, but right away, I lost like 25, 25 pounds. I mean, it was just incredible within two or three months. I mean, I was just, it was melting off. I was getting new clothes. Now, since then, the clothes that I got then, I just gave away because they're all too big. So I'm into an extra small uh, in most things now. In a, and I can fit into a size four uh, shorts that I went shopping for. Um, but you know, I'm so insulin sensitive that, or insulin resistant that if I eat, you know, splurge and eat something like oh, too much cauliflower or something, I'll, I'll gain a little weight. So, but really a six is really comfortable for me. And I was up to a 12 and in some things I was up to a 14. So I look at pictures now and I'm really mortified at how heavy I got. And, and I was doing all this good stuff and that's what I couldn't understand. I thought, well, okay, I'm 63, now I'm 64. And so I'm just doomed. This is how old I, I come from an Italian family. Uh, a half of them were obese. Um, my mother was always tiny, although she did gain a little bit of weight, a little bit of weight before she passed away. Uh, and, but, uh, I've always had this kind of battle with my weight up and down, up and down, up and down and not feeling good, you know, wishing I had more energy. Every time I did something, I had to be in the mood in order to clean, in order to do something. And my mother used to say she doesn't have that. She just does it. And now I understand because I have more energy. Um, but my whole quest has been to, to find more energy for my husband because it seems like no matter what I do, he's just as tired and fatigued. So today, if you watch the video I made just really quick to say, hey, this is the third day of our carnivore. We're taking a walk at Watson Lake. Um, he said he did, and I could tell, he didn't really, he said, yeah, I think I've, I do feel a little better, but I could tell from the spring in his step because yesterday on the second day of our carnivore diet, he, we took a walk at Boldwater Lake and he was just dragging. So now my lighting went because the sun went down over here. Let's turn on some light, see if that helps. Anyway. So he, uh, he is feeling a little better today. I am feeling better. I noticed that, um, both of our endurance in this walk and we went for quite a you'll see if you watch the video it's a pretty good uh walk there's you're up and down you're on a path a narrow path and you're there's rocks uh that you're climbing stepping over and everything so it, it's a nice little walk we did it for 30 minutes came back we're supposed to do some you know a little bit of weight lifting when he gets back from the bank, we'll do that. Try to do some resistance training and get in there to get rid of the, the little fat. Now, this fat right here is always going to be on me, no matter what. I wonder if my granddaughter, Carmela Rose, I wonder if she's got this. She used to have it when she was little. This came from my mother, the first Carmela. And, uh, but so it's, you know, that's, it's like a traditional thing here. So who knows? But the other areas that I have would be nice to, to, you know, you can't see them now to get rid of them. And, uh, we're, we're at the last little bit of weight that we'd like to, to, to lose, but we want to feel better. That's the biggest thing. We're really doing this. If you, if you are thin and you look great and you inside, you are falling apart, and you feel terrible, that's not a way to live. And so, you know, I, we're not, it's not the weight, the weight, the weight. Although, you know, it would be nice to have the extra fat, little, the little extra gone. So we're really trying the carnivore for, you know, to yeah, see if we can get rid of the last five pounds. But we're, we really wanted to see how it affects Mark's fatigue and my endurance as well and my you know fatigue level it's not as great as marks but so this is the third day like i said i showed you i'm going to have to go in the refrigerator today and start cleaning things out and i'll be running the not only the freeze dryer but the dehydrator because i have berries and things like that so um, I'm going to get busy emptying the refrigerator. We said we'd do this for a week. A month is a little extreme for me. But it's the third day. And everybody that I've watched on the internet that said they do it for a month, 
has been doing it for longer than a month. Some people never stop doing it. They're still doing it a year later. I don't know how far we're going to go with it. I'm just going to say a week for now just to see how it goes. And we're testing our blood sugar. We're testing our glucose and our ketone levels and uh, to see how they are each day. Keep track of that. And another day when I come on, I'll be doing, you know, I didn't do day one, but I did do day two and recap day one on that. And then today I'll go ahead and post. This is the third day of our carnivore diet. It's a quick little two-minute video at Watson Lake. And then tomorrow I will go ahead and do the, this is the fourth day of our carnivore diet and on that I'll go ahead and post our stats for those four days and you can see how it kind of is progressing because one of the things that on keto was going on is Mark was getting up in the morning and just taking his fasting glucose and ketones and his glucose was high one day it was 137 137 125 101 um, and his ketone level was not that high so we wanted to see what was going on with that. And so we've been uh, testing glucose and ketones throughout the day, and we're kind of experimenting along with that. And so we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. And um, so anyway, you have a great day, and uh, I'll keep you posted on the carnivore journey. All right, bye now.